And now, it's time for the main event in the red corner, led by Eddie Kane Jr., the five heartbeats, and in the blue corner, led by multiple leads, the Temptations. They about to get it on, because they don't get along. Yeah. All right, y'all. So the whole reason for this video here, y'all, because I'm tired of the age-old debate. I'm tired. You hear me? Back and forth with niggas. Yo, man, Temptations, the five heartbeats. So now we're going to take all biasness out, and we're going to come with just, we're going to come with the facts, the receipts, whether we like it or not, whatever we think about it, yo, we have to give our honest, honest input here. All right. Critic hat on. What is the better film, The Five Heartbeats or 1998's The Temptations? But before we get to that, though, real quick, before we get to that, speaking of two iconic groups, I just have to give a shout out real quick to the guy that passed away yesterday, Tito Jackson, one of the founding members of the Jackson Five. And it's kind of sad because he was the butt of a lot of jokes back in the day. He always said, yo, yo, man, yo, I'm Michael and you Tito. You know what I'm saying? But, yo, Black Tastic, we have to give flowers, man. Tito, if it wasn't for him and breaking that guitar string, we would have never got the Jackson 5. Because nope. if you know the story, he took Joe Jackson's guitar and broke the string, and Joe found out about it, but then found out that his boys are talented. They can sing. Tito can play the guitar. Got yeah. something here. It was because of Tito. Give that man respect. And the and the only Jackson that has some bass in his voice. The only one. <laughs> the only one, you know, didn't process his hair. Uh, he was always thick. Mm -hmm. He was always a thick of us. But, um, right, right. And, and he had a cool-ass name, you know? I liked his name. Tito, yeah, yeah. He, he was always a cool Jackson, man. Only time that nigga wasn't cool, though, bro, was that uh, 25th anniversary Motown special. What the fuck was that? That baseball... A uh, uh, uniform sequence shit that he had on. <laughs> what the fuck, a baseball cap in the shades? I'm like, Tito, bro, you have no business going on stage like that, man. <laughs> and a lot of them Jackson brothers, including Michael, was just flamboyant with their outfits. Yeah. It's glitter's been in since the 80s, so they made sure they got glittered up, sequenced up. <laughs> yeah, but on a baseball uniform, though, bro. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> But all jokes aside, man, I just wanted to uh, put that out there real quick, man. Rest in peace, Tito Jackson passed away at 70 years old. Uh, gone but never forgotten. And um, that's it and that's all, man. You have anything you want to add about Tito or your thoughts? It's just, I said the other day in the video I was talking, um, but all our heroes are passing away, man. Mm -hmm. When it comes to acting, I think we're down to, um, what, Bill Cosby, right? Bill Cosby, Fred the Hammer Williamson, and Billy D. I think that, that that's left of that generation, man. Yeah, and then yeah. Our, our, all of our music artists are passing away. It's it's crazy, man. But you know what? They live on forever through their music and through their movies. Right. It's tough to swallow sometimes. Now we're going to get to some more legends here. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready to get this over with, man. After this, I ain't talking about it no more. This is it. <laughs> Rap. I'm done. I ain't arguing no more. So here we are. The Five Heartbeats, 1991, directed, written, and starring Robert Townsend. A passion project, something that he's he wanted to do for a long time. Co-wrote it with Keenan Ivory Wings. Um, wanted to do a movie about the Temptations because that was his favorite group. But unfortunately, he couldn't, um, I, guess, I don't know, I guess he couldn't get the rights or something like that to write their story. So he had to end up dropping that idea, but I think he still used some elements of the Temptation story, but it's mostly based on the Dells, right? So that the Dells is really the, most, the focal point of that film. And um, then we have The Temptations, a made-for-TV movie directed by, I can't think of the name of the motherfucker. He did a lot of TV stuff, but did a good job on this one. Starring Leon and a bunch of other people. <laughs> First of all, I want to say Five Heartbeats, one of my favorite movies of all time, a staple in a lot of black households. I could probably quote that movie from beginning to end. And same with The Temptations, okay? The Temptations, another dope one. Even though it's three fucking or six hours long, but still quotable, enjoyable. It's, it's full with The Temptations music, yeah. which is a huge plus. So um, two very dope films, man. So it's not like it's a, a bum going up against Mike Tyson. These are two heavyweights. 
clashing here, but they can only be one winner. Blacktastic, my brother, what's your thoughts on both of these films, man? Man, I share the same sentiments, man. The Five Heartbeats was a passion project. Unfortunately, it ended Robert Townsend's directing career as far as movies because it was expensive. People didn't support it, man. You know, this mm. is 90s where black films was coming up with black directors. If it wasn't New Jack City or Boys in the Hood, black folks was not spending the almighty dollar to support these films. Mm. So it failed miserably in the box office. But man, it's a cult classic. It's a black classic. I love that film. The Temptations is my favorite doo-wop group of all time. You know, because I grew up in a household where my mom and dad was Motown, James Brown, the Supremes, the Dells, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. Then my older brothers introduced me to the funk, you know, Earth, Wind and Fire. Mm -hmm. So my music range is vast, but Temptation is my all time favorite doo-wop group. No one could do yeah. it until Boys to Men came out later on in life. Yeah, and what how many members they went through? Like, <laughs> you know, the temptations changed their members like draws, boy, <laughs> like so many of them. But yeah. um, and, and well, cool thing about the group too, like they started out as a duo group, but they actually was able to adapt with every decade. So you had the 60s with the classic duo, then you got to go into the 70s with the funk, you know what I'm saying? And then in the 80s, they was on some Rick James shit, you know, temptation sing. Ooh. Super freak, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, they, they transcended each each decade, but um, but difference is Temptations is a real group, and the Five Heartbeats is a fictional group, and that's where a lot of the arguments come in. Like, well, the Five Heartbeats is not even a real group. Well, it's based off the Dells, okay? But we're not talking about which group is better. We're talking about which film, which movie was better. Yep. All right, which takes us now to round one. Okay. Camaraderie. Camaraderie in a group is very important, especially when telling a story on film. Which group of young men had the better camaraderie? So you had the five heartbeats who had the same members throughout the whole movie. You had Duck, which is Robert Townsend, uh, Tico Wells is Choir Boy, right? Um, mm -hmm. Dresser, I can't remember his name that played Dresser. Uh, Leon is JT. And of course, my man Michael Wright is Eddie Kane Jr. Is it Eddie Kane or is it Eddie King? That's been a, a, a debate also. Is it King or Kane? I get it mixed up all the time. <laughs> well, you know what? We're just gonna say Eddie Kane Jr. That's how we said it. That's how we always said it growing Eddie Kane Jr. So we got those five, right? Then we have the Temptations, where uh Otis Williams and uh Melvin Blue were like the two like core members, but everybody else kind of was like kind of in and out. You know, but then but they were the main two, and then you add in David Ruffin, played by Leon, also as the lead, where he had a he had a big role, but then he wasn't with the group that long. So when you watch these two movies, right, as far as camaraderie goes, as far as chemistry, how they got along, and how they worked together on screen, who do you think had the better camaraderie between these two groups in the movies? All right, and those watching this, remember, we're talking about film direct. Mm -hmm. Acting hands down, the five heartbeats had it going on, man. Okay. That's gotcha. That's it. Enough said. That's it. And that's all. Camaraderie was on point. Um, that tells you how good the movie was. This is a fictional group, and they put this together the way they did. Hey, man, that's acting, that's 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 writing 101, right. And it, Beautifully, and I, hey, man, I fell in love with these brothers, man. I loved it. Yeah, and and even like as far as uh, screen time goes, like Robert Townsend, I think did a great job of giving them equal amounts of screen time, just about. So there was like no like, because you look at the Temptations, it was Otis's story. It was told through the eyes of Otis Williams. You know what I'm saying? So how much of that was accurate? Who knows for sure? Because nobody is allowed to tell it. <laughs> The rest of them niggas did, you know. What I'm saying oh. it's it's all told from Otis, man. You know, <laughs> no diss. <laughs> Cause shit, I even heard. Um, I don't know if you heard this too, bro. But uh, David Ruffin's family was trying to sue the um the network because oh. they said that they, you know, the way their father was portrayed, they was like, you know, David wasn't like that. They said that the movie really amped up his 
drug problem and his woman abuse or whatever. They was like, nah, man. And I don't, I don't know if they won, but I know they tried to sue. Hey, man, the only thing I know growing up, my mom and dad said that man can sing, but he had a drug problem. So yeah. it's all and part of his uh right even when my parents talked about him way before a movie could we watch old clips she go oh yeah that man can sing that mm -hmm. he and my mom was blunt he wasn't the most handsomest man in the world <laughs> but he sang so well your panties fell off <laughs> man look yeah they, they were rough he could blow he could blow man he could blow man that brother was talented and he can blow and he did blow. So and he did blow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably, you know, because with anything where it's it's a, a narrative, you know, a film or whatever, they're going to add a little extra sauce to it, you know. So it's probably, that was probably about 70% him and, you know, 30% just, you know, amplified just to make the movie more dramatic, you know what I mean? You know, but I did hear he used to whoop the shit out of Tammy Terrell because, um, the movie briefly showed him and Tammy Terrell how they dated, and they said he used to beat the dog shit out of her, man. Hey, not just him. Marvin Gaye to whoop that ass too. Yeah, Marvin Gaye. Yep, yep. Damn, Tammy, and she was fine. She could, why was she getting beat up? Ah, uh, I don't know. That that was a thing back then, man. You know, like, like Eddie Murphy said back then, you could slap a woman and it was cool. You know, like I don't have to. I don't have to do that shit, baby. Don't make me do it again. You know. <laughs> Now it's like, motherfucker, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hit me, motherfucker. <laughs> my father don't put his hands in my face. <laughs> yeah, women, women, especially petite women, were just easy targets, you know. You get out of line, you got slapped. I ain't saying it was right, but that's, that's what it was. And something about she always dated musicians and mm -hmm. drug problems mm -hmm. and put, put hands on her. Because I know Marvin used to beat her ass. Really? Yeah. Did he knock her teeth out or something like that? Oh, like that. Yeah, real bad. Yeah, yeah. Well, poor mm -hmm. Marvin. Rest in peace, man. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, camaraderie. So yeah, so the five heartbeats, they win that round as far as camaraderie and chemistry and all that. Okay, so round one goes to the five heartbeats. All right, round two, the script. Okay, Five Heartbeats came in at under, I think, just about two hours. Temptations, a full three hours. So you would figure the Temptations can put in a lot more story in that time. But if, if the script is not right, even with three hours, it could still feel like, damn, some, I feel like some stuff was left out. The Five Heartbeats felt like a complete story from beginning to end with no fat that needed to be trimmed off. I've I think it was perfectly paced. Yeah. I think the script was strong because, like I said, he balanced all five characters and their problems, what they went through, had their obstacles, how they got through the obstacles. You know what I'm saying? Uh, proper three-act structure, the beginning, the origins of the group, the fame, the downfall, the resurrection. Roll credits. Yeah. Temptations, it was more of Otis... And his ambition and how driven he was to put this group together, but it felt more like it was more about Otis than it was the rest of them. I'm, I'm probably tripping here, so I'm, I'm gonna let you say your piece in a second. So even though it, you did, it did show David Ruffin is in his struggles and Paul and his struggles. You know, what I'm saying that heartbreaking scene when he's drunk singing. You know, yeah. um, for once in my life, I have someone who needs me. But it still, it always felt like Otis's movie. Where in the five heartbeats, it felt like it was about all five of them. Even though Duck was like the heart of the group, he was the backbone of the group, but it still focused on everybody. So I would give it to the five heartbeats as far as the script. I'm gonna let you take the floor. As a white man would say, uh, <laughs> sir, I concur. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, like I said, we I like what you said in the intro of this video mm -hmm. that. Take all bias out. We're judging film to film, not not fake to fiction. You know, right? And um, the Five Heartbeats is a tight script. As you say, they got quotable lines. You know, mm -hmm. and Lord, man, everybody knows that movie from beginning to end. Anybody who's black who watched the film, right? Shoot, man, it's not even close. Yeah, in my opinion, yeah, uh, the Heartbeats. 
like I said, man, I watched that man's career all the way from Hollywood Shuffle up until he made that movie. He became a fine director. Right. Even Meteor Man had his moments, but uh, the Five of Heartbeats was it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and you could tell the the passion that he had too, because it, it was a it was a passion project, and you could tell from watching the movie and the script that there was it was close to his heart. You know, it was personal for him because he really felt for those characters. He really loved those characters. Even like it says, some of it's based on the Temptations. Um, the Temptations movie. Like I said, it just felt like it was Otis's story. It was it was about Otis, which is kind of funny because Otis was like the least talented one in the group, <laughs> but yet it was his group, you know. <laughs> like like dog, like there, there was a scene, there was a scene um, near the beginning, if you remember, when he met his girl for the first time, right? And they're singing, they're on the corner singing. So he sees the girl, right? And he's like, damn, so you thinking he's gonna go up to her and start singing to her. So he's like, hey guys, come on, let's go. <laughs> okay, he's leaving. And he, he's the only one not singing. <laughs> Everybody else is do 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 do, and he's like just doing this shit. <laughs> like like Michael Jackson preamble. Right, right. Oh, yeah. they, they're at the school singing by the bus. She walks by, they catch eyes. I'm like, oh okay, her and her two homegirls. Right. Um, and he's like, come on guys, come on. Man, all she heard was the dude doing the bass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, as I say, man, how, how the hell you the most untalented one? You're the only one with eight without no damn talent, but you the leader of the group. Yeah. How the fuck does that? Uh, don't make I, don't know, I guess I guess it was common in those days because hell, there's what's supposed to be Harold Melvin in the blue notes. I don't know where Harold Melvin is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So five heartbeats wins round two for script. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we get into standout scenes. Okay, which movie had this? And I don't think this, this might be a, a non-brainer as well. Okay, so but let's just think about it for a moment. Tomorrow, stand scenes that stand out in your mind. Five heartbeats. We have, of course, the beginning. Had nothing but love for you, baby. When Eddie made the girl faint. Yeah. Um when JT and Flash was going back and forth singing to the one chick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, JT Matthews. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um Temptations, what's the line that everybody knows? Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. Um when they kick Eddie. I don't know, to me it seems like the most memorable scenes was the ones with David Ruffin. Those are the ones that really stick out. Yeah, the most memorable scene to me in The Temptations, they went to the Coco Cabana. And uh, they was wondering, should he be in the group or not? Yes. His, his homeboy, who, who I thought was gay for a minute, slash, mm -hmm. buddy, you know, put the spotlight on him. He came down the aisle and started singing. I mean, that was the dopest scene. Yeah, yeah. And But it's one scene. That's it. One scene, yeah. What was it saying? Cloud nine? Yeah. We're fine on cloud nine. Did it, did it, did it. I'm like, yeah, I'm sitting there jamming to that shit like, oh shit, that's fire, man. Oh, yeah, yeah that was that was a dope scene. That scene, uh, and when they first was on TV and, and all their families was watching around the right, TV, the right. black, I thought how they went back to the original, how they really looked in real time. Mm -hmm. That was a dope scene. That was spot on, yeah. That was spot on, yeah. So you you know what? To be honest, um, yeah, the Temptations did have some dope scenes, but what he made the scenes even doper was the fucking music. Golly, that shit, yo, Papa was a Rolling Stone. That that whole scene right there with Paul, God, mm. we're gonna get to him in a second too, man. So um, I know standout scenes. Uh, that's a close one, bro. I'm gonna give it a tie. Okay, I'll give it a tie, man, because both movies. The right song mm -hmm. and the right scene, well directed, man. Because the Temptations, those scenes you can see in real life, right? YouTube, and they did it to the T, and that's and that's directing, and that's mm -hmm. so. I'm gonna give it a tie. Five Heartbeats is original, yeah. But, oh man, the Temptations. The temptations, yeah. That music, the music just takes it over the top. But um, you know what? I'm gonna go against the grain here a little bit. You know what? It, it's a tie, 
But there's just one thing, bro, that takes it over the top. When Eddie hits that note, oh! And that girl's in the seat like, <laughs> that scene right there takes yeah. it over that. It just takes it over the top, man. So I'm tired, but I'm going to give just a slight uh, short and curly to the five heartbeats on that one. I ain't mad at you, man. Um, yeah. You know, I want to say ditto. I'm, I'm going to stick to my to my ranking. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that scene is, yeah. That's yeah. Like yeah, yeah, no, nah, definitely, definitely. Like I said, that, just that one by itself, when Eddie hit that fucking note, and man, like I, you know what? No matter how many times I watch that movie, I get the same goosebumps every time when that scene happens. True, you know. Hey, Duck, JT, let's do how we did in the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a heart in the house tonight? I'm gonna listen to that after we get off this damn stream. Oh, yeah. God damn, <laughs> we well, better stop playing. All right, so standout scenes. Um, a draw for you. A short and curly five heartbeats for me. So. Five heartbeats is still up two to two to one and a half, I guess. I don't know. Two yeah. to two to two to a half for one. Uh, now this one is gonna be close too. Okay, musical numbers. So we so we we have the actual music of the Temptations, which that catalog is like fucking beyond epic, but. Even with great music, you know what I'm saying? When you have a good scene to go with it, a, mu a musical number scene, right? It just, like I said before, it takes it over the top. So the five heartbeats, you have the scene where Duck and his sister are singing. Yeah. Which the studio wanted to cut from the movie. I remember But it ended up being a fan favorite, okay? Uh, Nights Like This, I Wish Raindrops Would Fall. The one I just said, uh, A Heart is a House for Love. Mm. That's gonna be tough, man. Um, I keep going back to your opening monologue. Take bias out. Mm -hmm. Temptations catalog is unmatched. Right. We already know that, but I'm thinking from a critical standpoint, how the music fit the scene. Okay. That scene with him and his sister resonates with me, man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, growing up, your older brother singing, because none of my brothers could sing. Right. But, you know, and they look ugly doing it. They'd be like in the mirror doing all of them. <laughs> growing up in my house, man, and um, I'm going to give the slight edge as far as acting, mm -hmm. music note, score, and production to the five heartbeats, man. I agree. I agree, because it's, it's how it's how the it's how the music is used, how the scene is shot, and what you remember about it. You know what I'm saying? So if we if we're totally honest, we remember a lot of the Temptations music, but we don't remember the actual scene where the music was in. You know, except for for some parts, right? Like the Copa and like when they were first on TV. But there's times where like you don't remember exactly where that scene was. As soon as you hear, no matter how hard it gets, you see Duck and his sister singing to each other. Yep. You know, so I agree. That goes to the fire. So it was around uh, four. <laughs> Musical numbers goes to the five heartbeats. <laughs> now we're going to get to some deep shit here. Best written troubled character. We got Eddie Kane Jr. versus David Ruffin. Who was the better written character? Who was the more tragic character? Well, actually, you can't say tragic character because Eddie lived, David didn't. <laughs> but uh, so, I'm, okay, we're just going to stick to that. Who was the best written troubled character? Because every biopic has to have one. You watch any biopic, there's always that one character that's on drugs, going through something, womanizer. You know, they're, they're the black sheep of the group. All right. Eddie versus David. All right, man. I'm going with what you said. Best written tragic character. Keyword is mm -hmm. written. Okay. This is based on facts, but the one thing that Temptation suffers from, it's a biopic, and it's by the numbers. Right. I'm like, here we go again. You got mm -hmm. this come together, you know. 
Um, NWA was the same way. All of my black classics the same way. The five heartbeats stood out because some was based on truth, but the way it was written, right, character is better. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. the five is better in that in that regards. Yeah, because because Eddie, you know, um, so if you look at both of them, right? So Eddie started out as you know the lead singer. You know what I'm saying? He was kind of like the soft spoken guy, but he was he was cool as shit. You know, had a had a dope ass girlfriend, baby doll. You know what I'm saying? Man, a few words, but when he hit that stage, he was on. You know, and, and he loved his brothers. You know what I'm saying? So from the beginning, he didn't seem like he was gonna be a problem, even though he did have a wild side to him, you know, during the card game in the beginning. But Eddie loved his brothers, he did anything for them. Like there's that one scene where Dresser got his girl pregnant and he didn't know what he was gonna do. He was I guess debating on um getting an abortion. And remember Duck handed him some money, you know, Eddie reached his pocket, gave him what they had, and they did the whole, you know, love that shit. Yeah. But then once fame kicked in, once fame kicked in, that's where the drugs kicked in. He got a he got a a, a Flynn, an assistant, like like um David did, you know. But the difference is also he came back around. You know what I'm saying? He came back around, he got saved. Yep. Yeah. Let's be let's be real, bro. Why white folks don't understand that shit? You know, because because when Robert Townsend first uh told the studio about it, it was like it's like, what's saved? What do you mean saved? Saved. He gave he gave his life to Christ. He, you know, he's a born again. Oh, 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 that's what you call it. Man, there's so many beautiful black examples. Vanny got saved. And you come yeah. on, the mess around with Prince. Right. I think she was a good girl. I think Prince kind of turned her out a little bit, but mm -hmm. wild. Vanity was wild. Right. Got saved and came back. And unfortunately, man, when that much drugs is in your body, you only live to save life for so long. And finally, you just can't do it no more. And your body conks out. That's what happened to her. You know, right. But, right. But a lot of white folks don't understand that 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 verbiage that we speak, man. It's just they don't know better, you know? Yeah, and and the fact that he had the balls to put that in the movie, because you know, and like you said, in black movies, you know, black biopics, like you said, it's by the numbers, you have that troubled character, and then by the end, they have a tragic demise. But in this case, you know, he made the decision of no, I'm not gonna kill this character off. I'm going to turn him around. Yeah. So I remember, I remember vividly now, like just memory watching with my moms, you know, my brother, and when he, when you first heard him sing again, right, when Duck is sitting there, and you hear, mm-hmm, we're like, who's that, whose voice is that? Mm-hmm, I'm like, is that who I think it is? <gasps> Eddie, oh, shit! We started, dog, we started clapping, like, when I watched as an adult, I get tears. Every time. Every time, bro. Uh, yeah, man, so. because the, the truth the truth of the matter is, in real life, most of our heroes and our parents' heroes truly died. Right. Lifestyle. And, um, you know, you go from being rags to riches, mm -hmm. play a part. It's not always that they did the drugs. Who introduced them to the drugs? Is the yeah. And for Robert Townsend to flip the script, no, man, you know, he's a tragic character that gets saved. Man, that's that's what we need more of. That's powerful. And Hollywood doesn't like that. He nah. wouldn't claim, but hey, he's a he's a better man and a better director for that. And I love that scene. Yeah, you know? yeah, he he had balls, man. Like that's why I would like when you hear Face on Love say like, yeah, Robert Townsend was a coward. I was like, well, then again, I don't know Robert like Face on, so maybe Face on knows something we don't. But dog, to have the balls to unapologetically tell your story and not care what the white studio heads thought about it, you know. They, they, they didn't get it. He could have easily put his tail between his legs and say, okay, well, I'll give him what they want. I'll, I'll kill Eddie off, you know, and, and make it sad. You know, a hood movie has to be sad, but no, he chose to save him. And that's something that black people, that resonates with us. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, you know, Eddie, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, man, we need hope too in cinema. If we see something projected on the screen that's positive, it resonates. And sometimes we can take that home as a teaching moment Mm -hmm. It was bold enough to do that, man. I, I, I love the movie even more for that. Right, right. Because, you know, because the sad reality is they, the powers that be, would rather see a menace to society, which is a dope film, but they'd rather see a menace to society and a character like Kane get killed 
and like, oh, wow, that was powerful and deep, as opposed to Eddie Kane Jr. on drugs and then turn his life around and sober up. Well, what's entertaining about that? <laughs> Hollywood, the way they make it look nice, like in Boys in the Hood, they fade off into nothingness like ice cream. Right, cube. right. Oh, he's dead. Did they have a little writing? Comes mm -hmm. up. You know, that's Hollywood. Okay, we won't show you being killed. But right. As is going to die. Exactly. Exactly. You know, but then you have David Ruffin on The Temptations. You know, his like, so he starts out as a real humble character, you know, kind of like Eddie, man, a few words. Um, there was even a scene where he was so humble that it kind of like it shook him. Because remember, there was a scene where he was standing in the back of the bus. And Otis is like, what's wrong, man? He's like, nothing wrong. He's like, everything is right. For the first time in my life, everything is right. And you kind of felt that like, oh, okay, well, what does brother go through? You know? So he starts out as a humble character, but then the switch happens so fast. Like, first he's cool, but then like, okay, after they do the TV spot, right? That you see him at the cookout. Totally different person. Like, wait a minute. When the fuck did this happen? It jumped. Instantly, I mean, one minute he's with his brothers, the white boys drive by shooting the gun. He wanted mm -hmm. to, he was down for his brothers, and all of a sudden, him and Tammy Terrell come to the barbecue. Right, talked about it. He was missing rehearsals and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we didn't see it, but they were talking about it. Right, come to the barbecue, just with, with that light skinned dude from the daytime, um, uh, soap boppers. Just like, this is yeah, that what, what was his name, Flynn? <laughs> <laughs> And the way, you know, I, I didn't, to me, it wasn't well crafted. You know what I mean? Right, right. But still a dope performance, man. Like Leon, his performance stood out from everybody else's. Leon killed it. I mean, I'll even argue and say that his performance is better as David Ruffin than it was JT. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Even though I, I love JT, you know, yeah, I thought he killed his JT also, but man, he put some, he put some stank in that David Ruffin performance, man. Well, man, the scene where they was on TV for the first time, mm -hmm. that slide side by side with the original, they did the damn thing. The choreography, right. the, the background, everything, man. That was that was acting and production 101. It was perfect, man. Yeah, well, e even the famous line, they ain't coming to see you, Otis. I didn't know all these years. I didn't know that. That was improv. Yeah. Yeah, he was on um, he was on Vlad TV talking about that. He said, no, that, that line was improv and I guess the um the actor that played Otis, he didn't like it. He was like getting his feelings. So the director said, do it again. Yep. You know, to get that reaction. And that's when, you know, that classic line was born. You know, they ain't coming to see you, Otis. Matter of fact, we should call it David Ruffin in the Temptations. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So um, so yeah, dope ass performance from Leon, but I gotta give the writing of the character to Eddie King. You know, said and and he had some funny moments too when he was high. I can't front like it. It was tragic, but man, dog, the scene where he thought your boy was trying to replace him, right? I, I gotta do it, man. <laughs> he thought he thought Jimmy was gonna replace him, right? So he goes up to Flash's room. I can see the old child ass like glass. <laughs> and Eddie, you got it all wrong. Stealing my moves, my style, even trying to riff like me. <laughs> hey JT, come and get your boy. Detox him. Well, my spot flash, hmm? oh, slimy slither in my fucker. <laughs> you want my spot flash? Well, you can't have it because you ain't got it. Eddie Kane Jr., y'all. I would clap for 11 minutes like at those festivals, but man, my <laughs> hurt. Fuck that. <laughs> hey, that, hey that, that was Eddie Kane on drugs, man. Definitely, man. Definitely. Definitely. Oh, hey, if you want me, I got one more in me, man. I got one more. You, you want one more? Uh, give, me, hey, give me another one. Give me another one. All right. I'm going to set the scene up. We have Big Red's house. Jimmy walks in. Hey, hey Eddie. <laughs> so, um, Jimmy, you know, we're thinking about uh, buying the boys out. Buying the boys out? Eddie, what the hell is this all about? You know goddamn well what this is all about. I don't need no manager talking about replacing me. You ain't out there singing and dancing every night. You don't do nothing to get paid. <laughs> Eddie hey. K. Jr., y'all. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Yeah, my, my, my kids tell me I have a problem, man. It's like, how do you know how to do voices? I, I don't know. I just can do them. Hey, hey man, that's a talent that you're blessed with, brother. Yeah. You, Eddie Murphy, and a few other people can do that to a T, and that's it. Yeah. They just famous. That's yeah. all. <laughs> Shit, I'm not even hood famous. That's hey, that's what my daughter talked about canceling me tomorrow. You're gonna get canceled. I said, How you gonna cancel me? I ain't got shit. <laughs> they're, they're famous. I'm a little bit YouTube famous. It's a big difference. I'm a little YouTube famous. Yeah, huge difference. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, with that being said, Eddie Kane wins that round. <laughs> oh yeah. With, with an exclamation point that I just did. Bing. <laughs> So now the next round here, we're going to uh, just characters, okay? Overall characters, okay? So uh, Five Heartbeats, we have the core group of the Five Heartbeats. And besides them, you have Jimmy, the manager. You got uh, his wife played by Diane Carroll, hmm. okay? The Sarge, who I thought was hilarious. Um, of course, one of the best cinematic villains, I think, ever, Big Red. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's it's not even close, man. Uh, the yeah. fight, the, I'm gonna give the Temptations a little bit of credit. They first managed the female with mm -hmm. her. She was she was memorable for a little bit. Um, my yeah. man played um, the uh, owner of Motown, uh, Barry Gordy, the guy that actually played Barry Gordy. Yeah, actually, that played him. He was cool. Um, yeah, you know. The, the two moms of the two least uh, the bass singer mm -hmm. and and Otis mom I like their characters I love Otis's girlfriend in the very beginning because she was just fine oh, she was beautiful yeah she was beautiful beautiful yeah. but that's about it man you know it, and the guy that played Smokey Robinson was terrible that was uh, yeah that was bad casting and so, and Diana Ross I'm like Diana Ross that's Diana Ross yeah, that was terrible that was terrible yeah. But, like I said, it's a well-crafted film, mm -hmm. cast, and um, <clears throat> yeah, it's not even close, man. This not even close, yeah. I mean, because look, look how just, we just remember him off the top of the head. Like, come on, Big Red, you know, Jimmy, uh, Bird. <laughs> Roll off your tongue, man. I remember. Right. I, I, when you say their names, I see them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Big Red actually scared me when I first watched that movie, man. No joke. Big Red Skate, because he was like he was already a physically imposing person, but he was charming, he was cool. But then when he fucked Bird up, you see that that like that flap of hair over his face and just that yeah, what you say, boy, what you wanna talk about? <laughs> Hit that motherfucker again. <laughs> Let me up. Let me up. <laughs> <laughs> and dog, it, it was just something black it was just something terrifying. The way when they pulled him back up right from the window and he's just sitting there laughing and then here you see his hair dangling he's like <laughs> now if you want to talk about my hours and how i keep my books my office hours off from my office hours off from nine to five <laughs> that 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 low-key scared me a little bit i said this is a scary dude yeah man you yeah. know a couple of films had a great black villain. Red was one. Mm -hmm. And uh, you remember Malcolm X? What was Homeboy's name, too, in that movie? What was his name? Uh, so, about the same, the same brother that recruited him? Yeah. That turned on him? Yeah, I, I don't remember his name in the movie, but I know who you're talking about. I, I see his face. Hey, man, when Malcolm was getting beside himself, hey, that dude scared me, man. Yeah. He yeah. was so. And yeah. Temptations, they have nobody like that. Nah, David was almost that character. Almost, yeah. He was almost that character, yeah. But uh, if it wasn't for um, because who was the one that had a soft spot for David? Where even though everybody in the group turned on him, it was the the one uh the high pitch singer, the bass, right? No, 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 the one with the high pitch. I think it was Eddie Eddie Kendricks. Oh yeah, because they was actual friends. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Back in the day. Yeah, because remember they started their own Temptations group. Like that when they broke up, it was Eddie and um and David, and then you know Otis and his Temptations. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. They, they had, um, they had um, um, some kind of partnership back in the day. That's right. I do mm -hmm. remember. Yep, yep. So yeah, so if it wasn't for that, I think uh, David would have been that character, kinda. 
you cool. know, because yeah, he was he was close too, but yeah, but Big Red, Big Red was just scary, man. Like dog, that that movie even had a horror element to it when they killed the manager, you know, spoiler, when they killed Jimmy. Because remember he was on the phone and he was like, you know, tell Jimmy he can't hide. <laughs> and I'm like, this nigga's the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> out of yo, all the people that I talked to about the, about that movie, you the only one that talked about that hair. <laughs> yeah, that shit was flapping like this. <laughs> Big Red, Big Red was scary, and I, I was even scared for the wife when um when they had the funeral. And remember, he walked up in there, he was crying, them cracking out tears, and he was like, "Eleanor, you shouldn't be alone." <laughs> you know, maybe we can. And then she slapped him, and that flap came off again. I said, "Oh, when I saw the flap, I was like." Ooh, I hope you don't kill her. Uh, uh -oh. yeah. yeah, yeah. So with that being said, yeah, better characters go through five heartbeats. So so far, the temptations had only round they have is um a standout ah. scene. Huh? Oh yeah, standout scene. Well, 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 you gave it a tie. Yeah, you gave it a tie, but this this is a landslide so far. But we, we got two more rounds left, okay? <laughs> Soundtrack. So, so now so now we're just now we're just sticking to the music, the soundtrack, the fire. Okay, so if, if you had a choice, right? You're in your car, you're about to go to wherever to get something to eat. Okay, you're gonna throw in the five heartbeat soundtrack, or you're gonna throw in the temptation soundtrack. I'm gonna say this, man. The temptations was before my time, so I grew into that music. Mm -hmm. The five heartbeats came out at our time mm -hmm. and it was it was made at the time and i could relate to it oh man mm. i can never go against the temptations but yeah from a movie standpoint original soundtrack mm -hmm. god i'm gonna go with the temptations <laughs> Same here. Same. I, I was I was waiting for you to say it first. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say it first, man. Yeah. If I'm going to the store or something, temptation. I'm popping on that Temptation CD, man. Come on, Cloud Nine. Papa was a Rolling Stone. I know you want to leave me. What? A two pride to beg to let you go. You oh. better stop playing. Hey, come yeah. on. Uh, just my imagination. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, yo, let me tell you something. Every year, Christmas, man, the first CD you always put on when it comes Christmas time, the Temptations Christmas card. You better stop playing with me. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I entertained it, make it interesting, but no, Temptations music. Temptations, yeah, that, that that's a no brainer. Yeah, that that's a that's damn near a knockout right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yo, we winning all these rounds, man. Yo, one shot. Yo, he got rocked. <laughs> he got rocked that round right there. This is the last round right here, okay? Um, cultural impact. Which movie had a more cultural impact on the culture that, you know, so you think about black households then and now, which movie stands out where most black families know of and have probably watched more between those two films? This is also a fast slide in the other direction. Temptations was an okay TV movie. Mm-hmm. Five Heartbeats was cinematic. The name was original. I mean, everybody knows that it's it's a black classic, and every black household has a copy of that movie, man. Right. Movie. It was the only one of its time until the Temptations and everybody started coming on with their own biopics. Mm -hmm. And um, you can watch it with your parents. You can watch it with your grandparents. You know, it was almost like um the Wiz. The Wiz is a perfect musical, man. And the Five. Right with me uh dream girls is up there with me and the five heartbeats is right there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you gotta think at the time i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off I'm saying it's not even close in my opinion yeah um yeah because you gotta think five heartbeats at the time was like a needle in a haystack when it came to uh black films at that time because it was either everything was either hardcore or a message film you know what i'm saying or you know, or Spike Lee, who's in the category by himself. You know, I you can't even categorize Spike Lee movies really. They are just Spike. You have comedies, you got dramas, you got Spike Lee. Okay, so Spike Spike was in the class all by himself. But the Five Heartbeats was that rare movie 
where, like you say, you could watch it with your family, you could watch it with your grandma, your aunties, you know, even though there was cursing and, you know, stuff here and there, but for the most part, the whole family could watch it together. And the music moved you, the story moved you. Um, at the end, like I said, Eddie and Church getting saved, it just, it has something for everybody. And it just, it stood out. It is one of those movies where it's a shame that it flopped the way it did, but that's because, too, I think the studio didn't market the film. Like, I don't remember even seeing a trailer for that when it came out. You know how I first heard about the Five Heartbeats, bro? You're going to laugh, man. The first time I heard about the heart Five Heartbeats was when I went food shopping with my mom and she picked up a bottle of Downy. And there was a coupon on that bottle of Downy that said, get $3 off the Five Heartbeats when you purchase this bottle. <sighs> Swear to God. That's the first time I heard of the Five Heartbeats, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a bottle on a bottle of fabric softener, it was a coupon to buy the Five Heartbeats just to buy the bottle of Downy. Damn. Yeah, I only remember, man. I, I don't. I remember Fox TV was big then, as far as black mm -hmm. sitcoms. If they ever showed the trailer, it would have been then. Right. I can't remember because I remember when Girl Six came out and that movie flopped. But I've seen the trailer all the time on Fox. Right. I don't remember the Five Heartbeats, man. Yeah. They, they didn't know they didn't know how the studio didn't know how to market the movie because it's like okay it's not about anybody getting killed it's not in the hood it's about the singing group of five brothers that get along how can we how do, how do, how do we market this and the Dells wasn't as popular as the temptation so if you right. aim only our parents and grandparents knew who that was our generation yeah. was so yeah yeah, yeah, my father, my father was the one that had to tell me because, um, because every time I would watch the movie, I say, yeah, that's the real Five Heartbeats right there. <laughs> Boy, that's not the, that's the Dells, man. Who are the Dells? <laughs> Let me school you, son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pop, yeah, pops out of school. He's like, because for the first few years, I'm like, yeah, that's the real Five Heartbeats. There was no group called the Five Heartbeats. Boy, it was the Dells. Jesus Christ. <laughs> And the good thing about that movie, the younger generation found out more about the Dells because of the Five Heartbeats. Mm -hmm, facts. So cultural wise, yeah, man, it left a huge impact in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, well, there you have it, man. Uh, the Five Heartbeats wins by uh, seven, what seven rounds to one. Yeah, easily, man. Um, yeah. Yeah, they really went close, man. And mm -hmm. I kind of going in, but uh, you made some man some really good arguments with your questions. But right. thinking about it and breaking it down, and I've just recently watched the Temptations. I didn't have to watch the Five Heartbeats again. I know it. Thank you, thank you. There's your answer. I had to rewatch the Temptations last week. Right. To go. Oh yeah, yeah. Five Heartbeats. I don't have to watch that. It's etched in your brain. There. I can quote. I can quote that movie in my sleep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Listen, I I, I could be I could be in my sleep, man. Talking about <clears throat> what I had one, what two days. What I'm an alcoholic now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can just I know that movie like the back of my hand. Fuck out of here. That says it all right there. Yeah. So that's it. Like, listen, like I said, I ain't having this conversation no more. That's it, and that's all. The Five Heartbeats is the superior film. The Temptations is a dope film, dope soundtrack. Leon was great as De uh, David Ruffin, okay? Won't take nothing away from it. But when you try to compare it now, when you try to say, well, because it's a real group, it's based off a real group, real music, the Five Heart, the, uh, the Temptations, no, nigga. No. <laughs> nah. <laughs> as a film, the Five Heartbeats is, no, it's, it's superior. What are we talking about? Thank you. End of story, man. You know, um, Tupac and Biggie were two of the biggest rappers of all time, but those yes. movies are terrible. Yeah. So I don't want I don't want to compare real life to production. This is a film critique. Right. It's not even close, man. 